Well, 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 what have we here? It seems we've stumbled upon a character build that's more mischievous than Loki himself. Get ready, my friends, for we're about to embark on a journey inspired by the god of mischief. Why, you ask? Because causing chaos is just so much fun. I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. Before diving into the true chaotic build this is, Loki needs some stats that match his ability to get in trouble. We'll be using standard rays always. The 15 goes into dexterity. Loki is a quick, sneaky, and dodgy boy. He can dodge a hit whenever he needs to. And let's not forget of all the backs he stabbed, both literally and figuratively. The 14 goes into intelligence. Loki had a whole plan schemed up to take over Asgard, Earth, defeat Thanos, live successfully on Sakaar, even overthrow an entire time agency. My man had plans on top of plans on top of plans. Too bad none of them really ever worked. The 13 goes into charisma. Again, if you've got plans to take over multiple planets, you better be good at convincing people of your plans. He had an entire Shatari race ready to go for war for him, and even had Owen Wilson eating out of his hand. Plus, he loves to hear himself talk. And let's not even mention the internet's reaction to Tom Hiddleston. The 12 goes into Constitution. He has plot armor like crazy. Arrested in Avengers, only to be set free to die in Thor Dark World, only to be brought back in Thor Ragnarok, only to die again in Avengers Infinity War, only to be brought back again in Loki. My man feels like he's been dead for 30 minutes. The 10 goes into Wisdom. It's not like he's not wise, he just chooses not to be. Plus he can be easily distracted, leading to him being in unsavory positions. And the 8 goes into Strength. Who needs to be strong when your enemies can't even hit you? They're too busy being charmed, falling for illusions, or being stabbed in the back. I have been falling for 30 minutes! Our next step? Custom lineage, of course. We of course considered things like Asmar, but last time I checked, Loki didn't have any wings. So Jotuns that are disguised as guardians because they were taken at birth are a custom lineage. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Anyways, we're boosting that intelligence stat because brains are better than brawn any day. And thanks to the Eldritch Adept feat, we're donning our best Loki disguise. Mischief awaits. For our background, we're going noble, because he's practically royalty. I'm pretty sure he ruled Asgard there for a bit. History and persuasion skills are our choice, because who doesn't love a charming rogue who's also a mama's boy? And then choose any gaming set that your heart desires, because what's a mischief adventure without a bit of gaming? Just like his time on Sakaar. I assure you, brother, the sun will shine on us again. <laughs> now let's get into the breakdown of Loki's classes. Level 1, we're going with Rogue. We kick things off with Stealth, Deception, Performance, and Sleight of Hand skills. We're going to be the life of the party, much like Loki in his Guardian Feast. And when it comes to Expertise, Deception, and Sleight of Hand are our jam. Sneak Attack? Well, that's our trusty dagger of surprise, just like Loki's penchant for backstabbing. Now, at level 2, we're going with a second level in Rogue. He claims cunning action. Dash, dodge, and hide as a bonus action? This character will be darting around the battlefield like a true trickster, much in line with Loki's evasive antics. Level 3 gets another level in Rogue, and it's time to embrace our inner assassin. With the assassin subclass, we gain proficiency in disguise kit and poisoner's kit, and our assassinate feature, advantage on characters who haven't taken turns, and crits on surprised creatures. It's almost too easy, just like Loki nearly taking down Thor on the Rainbow Bridge. At level 4, we're going to switch it up a bit and go with Wizard. Spellcasting is our next move. Friends, Minor Illusion, Charm Person, Silent Image, and Distort Value are our tricks of the trade. Illusions and Charm? A Loki party trick, especially when he uses the charm to his advantage. Level 5 sees another level in Wizard, and we choose the School of Illusion. Half cost of Illusion spells, and an improved Minor Illusion, sound, and visuals in one cantrip? Yes please! Our illusions are going to be as enchanting as Loki's silver tongue. Level 6, and we'll be jumping back to Rogue now. And at level 4 of Rogue, we take the actor feat. Loki gains plus 1 in charisma and masters the art of disguise and performance. Loki is now a master of impersonation. I mean, no one is going to be able to see through his disguises now. Unless Thor rolls a perfect insight check, but I'm sure that won't happen. Level 7, and a 5th level in Rogue. And Uncanny Dodge is his next trick. We'll use our reaction to dodge incoming attacks. 
A hammer does a lot less damage when you move just a little bit out of the way. At level 8, Loki takes a 6 level in a rogue. Now, he's an expert in arcana and performance, making us a true master of the stage and the arcane arts, much like Loki's theatrical performances throughout the MCU. He may not be on stage as often as the Asgardian players, but he sure does know how to do a death scene, not to mention famous plays like Get Help. We are not doing Get Help. Get Help! Please! My brother's dying! Get Help! Help him! At level 9, we're switching it back to the wizard game. Invisibility and Gift of Gab are his newfound talents. He'll be the life of the party, even when he's nowhere to be seen. Loki's got a knack for disappearing and reappearing when least expected. Now at level 10, we're going with the 4th level of wizard and the piercer feat. He's getting more adept at wielding his daggers, and his dexterity gets a boost too. Now he can flip his blades even more flawlessly, and stab better with it too. Level 11 brings a 5th level in wizard. Major image and more illusion spells. His illusions are becoming grander and more elaborate, akin to Loki's impressive feats. He hasn't hit his max potential yet, but he is certainly on his way. Level 12 is a sixth level in wizard, and malleable illusions come into play. He can allow his illusions to adapt to the situation, changing them as needed. Thirteenth level is a seventh level in wizard, and his magical talents continue to grow. With spells like hallucinatory terrain and greater invisibility now in his repertoire, He's shaping the world around him with illusions that rival the grandeur of Asgard itself. Level 14, and we're going with an 8th level wizard, and our character's magical prowess is matched only by his moments of sheer luck, much like some unforgettable instances in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Embracing the lucky feat, he not only increases his chances of success, but also mirrors those times when fate seemed to smile upon our favorite trickster. Who needs skill when the Tesseract falls right into your hands because of a time-traveling Tony Stark gets it knocked out of a briefcase because the Avengers wouldn't let the Hulk take the stairs? That was a lot. Level 15 and a 9th level in Wizard, and he reveals in the Art of Deception. With mislead in his arsenal, he can seamlessly become invisible and conjure a convincing duplicate, much as he did during the Loki's memorable escape from the S.H.I.E.L.D. jail cell in the Avengers movie, where he used his illusion magic to outwit his captors and gain the upper hand. Level 16 and more wizard, and he's ascending to the pinnacle of his illusionist powers. Illusory self is now his ultimate trick, allowing him to create duplicates that confound attackers, much like Loki did during the Battle of New York, where he bamboozled his adversaries by creating mirages of himself, leaving the Avengers bewildered. Level 17 and more wizard, his mastery of illusion magic continues to deepen. Spells like mass suggestion and programmed illusion are now at his fingertips, making him the puppet master of chaos. Level 18 and the 12th level wizard, and this time, an ability score increase. He's bolstering his intelligence to a remarkable 18, embodying the cunning and brilliance that define him. It's a testament to his growth as a character, paralleling Loki's own evolution from a mischievous trickster to a complex and multidimensional figure in the MCU. He knows far more than he did when he tried to take over Earth, and it definitely shows. Level 19, and we're going to go with wizard some more. Our character's mastery of illusion magic reaches a mesmerizing zenith much like the awe-inspiring illusions featured in the Loki series. With spells like Mirage Arcane and Project Image at his fingertips, he's capable of conjuring illusions that rival the grandeur of Loki's illusory Asgard, a spectacle that left audiences awestruck and showcased the character's unparalleled command over the realms of deception. However, it's missing just one thing. And that comes at 20th level, and he stands as the undisputed master of illusion magic. Illusory reality is now his piece de resistance, allowing him to do something truly extraordinary. He doesn't just have the power to create something that looks like Asgard, but for a brief moment, it is enough to make it real. A real Asgard certainly is able to pull the attention from the likes of Alioth. No, we may lose, sometimes painfully, but we don't die, we survive. Everyone has some balance. Even the troubled Loki character needs to have a change of heart from time to time. So let's dive into some pros and cons of Loki's sneaky build. For some pros, he's an illusion extraordinaire. Loki is the embodiment of illusion magic, conjuring a plethora of illusions. His perfected imitation and ultra-realistic illusions leave everyone, friends, enemies, and himself alike, in awe. He's also charmingly lovable. With charisma as his strongest weapon, he's a magnetic charmer who can cast enchantment spells, beguiling and persuading with ease. He's so charming that he practically falls in love with himself. He's also a master of the stabby stabby. When diplomacy fails, he's a master of combat, delivering deadly sneak attacks with finesse. Loki's got a knack for quick and lethal strikes. He's got some cons, however. 
like he's as fragile as a house of cards. When it comes to defense, he's not too sturdy. His low AC and health suggest that he's not meant to take hits, making him the last one to volunteer for the front lines. He's also a little specialized on his spells. While he's exceptional at illusions and charms, his spellbook lacks the versatility of a full-fledged wizard. He's a specialist, not a magical Swiss army knife. He's also a physically weak little baby boy. Don't expect feats of strength from him. He's more reliant on brains and magic than brawn, which he is more than happy to leave to his brother. With a mastery of illusion magic that rivals his on-screen counterpart and a charisma that can charm both mortals and gods alike, he embodies every facet of the trickster god. As he continues to weave his web of deception, engage in a love story with Sylvie, and leave chaos in his wake, it's clear that he's the embodiment of mischief itself. In a multiverse filled with surprises, our Loki is ready to pull off pranks that even the trickster god himself would applaud. It's a bit narcissistic if you ask me. So as we eagerly await the next chapter in the Loki saga, our character stands ready to dazzle, beguile, and perhaps even rewrite the script of his own adventures through some time travel shenanigans. Be sure to check out this character bow for free over at our Patreon, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to sneak attack that like button, and maybe subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll catch you on the flip side. Shh, there's a post-credit scene, you need to be quiet.